G'day, my name is Damien. I'm known as Damned on the FG forums, and one of the things that I do is the Morcor rule set. And the Morcor rule set is a generic rule set designed to be able to play as many possible games, uh, other role, types of role playing games, games that don't have their own full rule set. It's a fairly flexible rule set, but it does require a little bit of practice to get used to it and to work out how to get make the most out of it. You can also go further than using just more core and you can develop an extension to extend the capabilities of more core or to customize it so that it more closely fits the rule set or the rule system, the RPG game system that you want to play. And that's what we're going to have a look at in this series of videos. We're not going to get into too much detail, but I'm going to step by step go through the process of what's involved in writing one of these extensions and why I start in each particular section and I'm going to go through the code. We won't dig down into the code and we won't spend too much time on the code. Uh, people following these videos will have some idea how to do these sorts of things and there will be enough information in this video to point you in the right direction to show you how to find what things you need to edit in the code and allow you to get started on this process. So this is a standard Morecore desktop and it, there's no extensions or anything loaded, it's just the default view. Now this is version 1.47a, it's a beta version, uh, it has a nice new feature uh, by M. Cortez and that'll show up later on in the series. Um, it's got, a, as always, there's a, a bunch of other small incremental improvements as we go. So the first thing we want to do when we create an extension is go into our Fantasy Grounds data folder and you can do that by clicking on the Explorer folder icon on the splash screen of Fantasy Grounds when you load it or you can open an existing campaign and click on images and then folder and back up a couple of levels in Explorer and you will find the Fantasy Grounds data folder. You go into the extensions folder, you create a new folder, generally you will give it a name that is related to your project. In this case my folder is called MCDBD, MC for more core and DBD as in Damned Basic Dungeon. And this is a little bit of a play on D&D Basic Edition. So my extension.xml, which is the only file that's required in an extension, uh, contains a few important elements. We've got the root version and release and a logo. Then we have the properties, name. This name is what will show up in the extensions list. The rule set name is the rule sets that this extension will be available for. So this rule set will only show up if the more core rule set is selected. If you're loading 5e or some other rule set then this extension won't be visible. If you're creating an extension you want it to be visible for multiple rule sets, you can put multiple rule set tags in here, rule set name more core, rule set name 5e, rule set name PFRPG or if it's a really generic extension you can either leave that out completely or you can do rule set name any a n y there's also an announcement text in here and there's some empty base tags the base tags are where we're going to actually include all the files that do all the work this is the contents of my newly created mcdbd extension folder and I've created just some blank folders, common graphics, scripts, and of course my extension.xml. I try and create the same folder structure as the official rule sets, or at least the core RPG rule set, because that helps me understand where things are, and it helps other people as well. The first file we're going to edit is a file called graphicsframes.xml. Now, you can see some of the code in here. We've got a definition called desktop, which is the wallpaper. Shortcuts, which is the 
graphic element that would sit underneath the sidebar tokens. We've got car select, which is the window where you select characters from with all their portraits in. Car select entry, which is just a highlight frame that's just over the top. There are dozens and dozens of these frames. Now you can see other examples of frames from within the more core rule set from within this same file name or you can get them from core RPG or you can see similar ones in say the 5e rule set. I've created a bunch of graphics for use with this, not, not a great number of graphics, just enough graphics to fully theme this. This screen here shows the graphics fonts file. Now you can see I've got two or three different fonts in here. They are called Pointedly Mad, Open Sans Regular, Open Sans Italic, Open Sans Bold, and Open Sans Bold Italic. You can see they're all TTF fonts. You can see that the path to the fonts is listed as graphics, fonts, and then the font name. And with the fonts you can see I've not only pointed out the path to the TTF file, I've also included the exact display name that you get from each of those fonts. So that pointedly mad is the same name that when you view the TTF file uh, from within Windows you'll see that it contains the pointedly mad font. And above that you can see font name reference H or font name sidebar font name reference R. At various places in the rule set it will specify a specific font. When it specifies a font, this is where it looks for the definitions. You can see this is the pointedly mad true type font and you can see the actual name right at the top in the window bar or you can see it listed as font name pointedly mad. This is a, another file called fonts sorry graphics underscore icons and in this particular case it's containing contains all of our sidebar graphics the small campaign tools and the large campaign tools these are the buttons that sit on the right hand side of the screen you might notice that my sidebar buttons there's only two of them there's actually just button blank and button blank down and I've used those for all the different large sidebars you'll see why in a minute now this is my extension to XML with a few updates in there. I've included those files so you can see in between the two base tags I've got tabletop settings, include file graphics, graphics frames, include file graphics, graphics fonts, include file graphics, graphics icons and that tells the rule set when it loads this extension to also load these particular files. If I restart my tabletop and you can see in the chat window that the more core damned basic dungeon extension is loaded and you can see that it's got a blue background there's a custom chat frame there's a decal on the desktop it's not actually a decal it's actually just part of the background and we'll change that later on but it will suffice for now you can see the small campaign tools top right the individual specify buttons but you can also see that my campaign tools, the normal ones on the right, have not displayed properly. You can see that there's a bunch of buttons there, but no text or no way to define what they are. And that's because it's still using the standard um, sidebar icon setup, which expects to see an icon that's roughly square in proportions. So the icon should be roughly as tall as it is wide or wide as it is tall and the labels on those buttons if they have any labels are generally actually graphics so to make this work I've actually got a script file and this is a little bit of uh, script magic uh, you're best just copying this and then tweaking the positions and the spacing and the alignment of these uh, you can also see the set doc title font sidebar that was in the graphics fonts file we looked at earlier. I'm going to include this. You can see that script files, Lua files, 
are included differently to XML files. XML files are included with an include file tag. Script files need a name, a unique name for each one, and then the path to the Lua file. And that will execute uh, that script when Desktop Manager DVD is called. And when I reload my tabletop again, you can now see that my buttons all appear to be nicely graphically laid out. Now these are actually a slight cheat. Uh, they're actually text and they're drawn on load when the when the system loads up. Now I find that these take up a lot less room than the standard graphics and they're easier for me to see what they are. They're text instead of graphics and they're a lot lot easier for me to create graphics for because I don't have to create uh, a dozen or more very specific graphics representing each of those items. I don't have to create an icon that's recognizable as being characters, an icon that's recognizable as being quests. And in this screen I've just opened up a bunch of different windows just to give you an idea. So of where we're at at the moment. Now this theme is far from complete but you can see that a whole bunch of themes have been replaced with this rough hand-drawn frame uh, with a sort of parchment background. It's still got the default core RPG inner frames showing off, showing in that spot. So that's the part one of this more core rule set extension tutorial where we look at building the basic elements of a theme. I hope this video is useful to you and I hope that this video might inspire you to start a project of your own and to share that project with other people. You cannot create a rule set with a full reference material and share it without permission, without written permission of the publisher or copyright holder, but you can create the rules and the framework in which a game is played. You can put all the rules into a game so long as you're not including text or custom text or fluff text from them. So you can create full character sheets that are shareable. Uh, there's even some other parts you can create stat blocks that are shareable. Again, no fluff text or copyrighted names, but there is quite a lot of things that you can share. And hopefully as this series of videos will show, we're going to create a version of basic D&D &D that will be uh, OGL SRD compliant and we'll be able to include a certain amount of content with this. Thank you for your time.